Good afternoon. So I'm actually out here harvesting some cherry bell radishes in my garden, um, which you can see here. And these are just grown in with our blackberry plants. It's actually a 16 foot by four foot bed. And you can see the blackberry plants there. And then we have peas growing along the trellis since blackberries are dormant during the winter months. And this just gives us something to fill the space. And it also fixes nitrogen, which is a double bonus. And if you look here, you can actually see we are getting a flower, which is super exciting. Um, but back to the radishes. Now, cherry bell radishes take about 28 days to harvest and grow, which is great for us. We can leave them longer in the ground since it is cooler weather. Um, we can't grow this down here in the summertime because we do live in South Texas and it just gets way too hot. And they're so spicy, you can barely eat them. Now, this is a pretty deformed radish, but the great thing for us is that um, we learned that if you fry the roots, they actually get sweeter. And as far as their greens are concerned, we eat those too. They are a little spiny, but we have to, first we soak them in water to soak off all of the dirt. And then we just fry them up. And they're really great in just about anything. Um, you can cook them in vegetable oil, butter, just cook them down, throw them into stews, and that's really great. So here's another one. You can kind of get an idea. They're not really big. They're really supposed to be about the size of cherries. So I didn't plant these uniformly. Honestly, I saw that we had a lot of extra space and I had bulk bought some random seeds um, when the pandemic started. And I got a really good deal on a 3000 pack from burpees of radishes. And I thought, why not? You know, at least it'll make me feel good having some kind of food growing in the garden. And I just gave it to my eight year old and told him to go out and plant them. So he threw them randomly and you can see some are really close together but um that's fine because what i do is i'll just go through and i'll look at the roots and i'll say this one's big enough and i'll just pull it out and then it leaves plenty of room for all of the smaller plants to kind of start to grow and really this one is actually a really nice radish it's growing it was growing underground instead of above the soil and wow just it's actually a really good size and then I just put them over here this little container um, it's an insert for my crisper for my fridge so it's really nothing special but throughout everything we actually if you'll look around there's all of these little seedlings popping up and these are different types of lettuce mixes um, some of its lettuce some of its arugula I know that there's some um, Marvel of Four Seasons in here, which is a French variety of lettuce, if I'm not mistaken. This is a Paris Cause lettuce. And it just fills in the space. So as the radishes are ready to harvest, and really I just pull them out, not just when they're ready, but whenever I want to cook them. And also I, I tend to play in mills around what's ready in the garden. And so that means that sometimes I'm just not sure what we're going to eat that day. But if there's kale out and it's ready to pick or radishes, then we're going to have kale and radishes somehow, usually in stir fries or stews. And so here you can kind of see the radishes are growing together. This one's splitting, which is really from uneven watering. It's really dry here and... Today's the first day I've watered in about a week and a half because I just haven't. I don't have a good excuse. So I'll just go through and So it's actually a pretty good little clump. Now the dirt does get in, so I try to sprinkle the dirt back into the garden. Um, it just doesn't always happen. That's why as soon as I am, I gather all of these out, I fill my sink, my kitchen sink full of water, and I go ahead 
and I soak them. Oh, hush. See our baby basset hound thinking that it's fun to tear up the garden. Typical kid. And so right here you can see what I mean about them being really thickly sewn and me just going in and pulling up the ones that are right. And I know that if you're doing this on a really large scale, that that's just not ideal. And you might want to try to space them out more but moral of the story is is that it really doesn't have to be overthought <laughs> i mean they're gonna grow they're gonna fill out so as it turns out my camera has a really bad habit of timing out and i'm still learning how to really edit videos and splice them together so it makes it a little more difficult to figure it out but i'm working on it i will get there Everything has a learning curve. And so, here's another pretty good radish. Right here, you can kind of see some other plants. We do have a kel right here growing. And this one's actually been here for over a year. And it looks really terrible because I come in and I harvest it. And I'll just pull out the leaves that are not looking good. I'll throw them in the compost and the leaves that do look good. I'll just pick them out when they're about this size. I just come down here and break off the leaves and then that's it. It just goes right in. And so, so far you can kind of see, you know, there's a pretty good bunch of radishes in here. And then all of these greens. And I know a lot of people throw them out, but I just, like I said before, the greens are really good for you. They're really rich in vitamins and I don't see the point in throwing them out. I love cooking them. Um, I've also found that they dry really well. Now, they do change colors when they dry. They're just really good to dry them and put them in a jar. And you can use them for later to throw in stew soup or really anything. My kids are not vegetable eaters and neither is my spouse. And so I hide vegetables and everything. I know some people say that's frowned upon, but I don't care. I'm a vegetable hider. I will cook vegetables down into anything gravy, rice, ground up in spaghetti, it doesn't matter. I know that they're eating vegetables, it makes me feel better, and they don't know they're eating vegetables, or maybe they do, and they just don't have to see it, and that's fine too. It's just not everyone's thing. So, you really just have to find out what works for your family and kind of cook accordingly. Now, right here we have a dill, and it actually just kind of popped up on its own. Um, I don't know when it got planted, but it's growing really great. And it's so nice to come out here and get fresh dill, especially for making ranch, which is primarily what it's used for. And I still have not figured out what this is, so I've been pulling it out of the garden. It's best to lose a couple of plants that you would have liked to keep because you didn't know what they were, then keep something and feed it to your family and make them sick. Now, this is actually a grapevine. It's a muscadine cross um, that we just got from the local grocery store. They're dormant right now. We actually have four of them on the property and they're not very old. But I planted it here because this is going to be a fence line for the kids play area. And it'll be about four foot high and the vine can just grow horizontally across the fence line which I think will be really great and here are the blackberry bushes these are prime arc as far as I know they are thornless all of our blackberry bushes are thornless and we have 12 of them but there are two different varieties originally I thought they were all prime prime arc or prime of arc but it turns out I was really incorrect about that here is a close-up of a bud that hasn't opened yet, and if you bear with me, here is one that is opening, which is really cool, and then here is one that I noticed yesterday that's actually already opened and fallen off. And then also, you can see we have some lettuce growing down here, a bunch of baby sprouts coming up. These are Paris cause lettuce. Like I said, haven't done a good job of watering, so when I did start to water, it just splashed everywhere. It made an awful mess. It was not pretty. Not my finest moment as a gardener. You can also see here are some rutabagas. 
I actually saw rutabagas on Roots and Refuge Farm for the first time, uh, I want to say last they year. So good. And they're just starting to fatten up. So you can kind of see the various sizes of them. And here's one up close of a root, kind of compared to three different roots, because there's a really tiny one back here and a medium sized one and one that's actually starting to fatten up. You can kind of see it compared to my hand. And then in here again, we have a ton of baby greens. Um, there are six of us in our household and we always have people over. I have a really big family. I have a lot of siblings that are younger than me that come over and growing things like four or five heads of lettuce may be great for a smaller family, but for us, it's not realistic because I have to harvest at least an entire head of lettuce in order to uh, make dinner. And that's just one meal, and that's with mixing everything else and making other sides and just adding vegetables into it. So it just doesn't go very far. I'm used to what my parents call cooking for an army because you really have to when you have a large family. Never know who's gonna stop by. So as you can see, like here's some of them. This one's not ready, but it's splitting. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest it. And this is where eating the tops really comes in handy because it would be so disappointing to have to pick a radish because they're splitting. Whereas here we can kind of use it. We're not wasting the tops. So there are actually quite a few more that are ready to go, but I don't want to pick too min many because from my experience, radishes just don't store very well. Here's two that Cookie actually pulled up. And I don't want to pull up a ton of radishes. Um, there are storage type radishes, this is just not one of them. And I don't want to pull up a ton of radishes that I know are just going to go to waste or not store in my fridge. Here I'll just kind of lay them all out so you can see. Really when you think about it, this is a pretty good amount right here. And here are some of the tops and the roots. So that's it. It's not a massive harvest, but it's an, more than enough for one mill. And then I'm just going to go inside and soak these into the sink full of water, um, cold water, and it'll kind of puff up the leaves. Also any caterpillars that happen to be crawling around in there um, usually float up to the top and the dirt floats to the bottom. And then I drain it and I rinse them off one more time and they're just ready to cook straight into the pan. So thank you guys again for joining me and I hope you learned something. So here it is, the final product of getting the radishes out of the ground and our lonesome piece of kale and throwing it in the water. And you can see just how nasty the sink water is and just how much dirt comes out right off the bat. And so I just go ahead and drain it after letting it run for just a minute or two and get that really excess dirt off of the bottom. That way it can kind of drain out because there's no point in soaking radishes in already muddy water. And so that kind of just gives you an idea just how much dirt are on the radishes when you first pull them out of the garden. And I think really I'm getting to the point where I'm gonna start going out with a five gallon bucket because I actually have a lot of five gallon food grade buckets. Um, I get them from Firehouse Subs, which is firefighter owned and operated restaurant and if you haven't been there i highly recommend going there checking out their pickle buckets they're three dollars a piece they're food grade buckets they reek of pickles but we found that the first thing we'll store in them if we're storing food, bulk food in them is um it's flour and it kind of soaks up that pickle smell and then we can wash them out and and use it for something else but anyways, they're really great. They're food grade. They come with lids. And so I think that would be really good to kind of soak the radishes in and other vegetables right out by the garden to kind of 
get a lot of the dirt off. So I don't have to worry about the seat and drain getting clogged full of dirt. I can't tell you how many times I've had to take the sink apart. Look at this one. It's so big it just split right open. But as you can see, I mean, we have a pretty good amount of actual bulbs on the radishes, which I cut up and I'll fry those first to soften them and it sweetens them up a lot. For me, cherry bell radishes are usually really spicy, but I did go ahead and grow these during the winter months when I first started gardening. I would grow them in the summer and in Texas heat when you're talking about 30 days straight, maybe 100 degree weather. It's just a really, really terrible idea and it's not worth it. But these pretty much grew themselves. By pretty much, I mean they grew themselves. Today's the first time I've watered in a long time. And I didn't even do a deep watering because primary, primarily, the everything out in the garden right now it's minus the blueberries and the kale i mean blackberries and kale actually have pretty small roots this is kind of a franken radish it actually has two separate roots so i'm not sure what's up with that you can see the water's really starting to come in clear and i'll just leave the radishes here it's not going to hurt them to soak in this water and then whenever i get ready to separate the radishes from the roots it's really simple i just you can just pinch or twist them right off no big deal and so there you see like oh, some other greens that you'll get for the radishes and here's the top and if you want you can cut the stem off and this part but the whole radish is actually edible so um, we usually cut this part off in the little stem part, and then what we don't eat, we will throw out in our compost bin. But realistically, you can toss the whole radish into a blender and blend it up really nicely and cook it that way or throw it onto a salad. And I just think that it's a really easy, fast-growing crop. Um, and it provides a pretty substantial amount of food. 